Hi, and thanks for being with us. We're here in the field at the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office today with Deputy Roth, and he is a drug recognition expert. He's been on the road here with the Sheriff's Office for 15 years. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. We're here today to find out all about the makings of an OWI and hear firsthand what the Sheriff's Deputy do before, during, and after the arrest. Um, Deputy Roth, can you tell us a little bit about the frequency that you get OWIs on any given weekend? How much do you see them? How much man time is spent officers working on those arrests? I guess on you know any given weekend you probably see between three and four OWI arrests for, uh, for our div division. Uh, and. Um, it probably takes us about three and a half man hours in order to process somebody uh, for an OWI arrest. Okay, so that is a significant amount of time and an officer is dedicated to that. It is. Okay. Uh, walk us through the actual arrest. If you see somebody and you have indication that they are intoxicated, what happens? Well, first, you know, the officer is driving on the road and he has some kind of driving behavior, whether the car is speeding. Um, whether the car is weaving, crossing over the fog lines, um, might have had a, a, a traffic accident, or an officer might just stop a vehicle um, randomly for an equipment violation. Uh, the officer then makes contact with the driver, at which point in time and there's clues that uh, t show us that the driver is possibly impaired. Um, drivers have glassy eyes, might have a heavy odor, odor of intoxicants on his person, um, might be slurring his words, speaking with a thick tongue, and um, so after we assess that the driver might be impaired and we have the driver exit the vehicle to run through some field sobriety testing. And that's r done right on the roadside. And um, what I do is I have the driver exit the vehicle after notifying our dispatch that we're going to run him through fields. And uh, then uh, the first test that I'm going to do is a horizontal gaze and nystagmus test where I'm going to look at his eyes. I'm going to see if they uh, pursue smoothly. I'm going to see if they have a jerkiness at maximum deviation and then jerkiness prior to the onset of 45. And, and, and when, you, when you get good at doing horizontal gaze and nystagmus tests, you can tell how impaired a driver is just by that test alone. Um, after they do that test, then I'm going to run them through a walk and turn test. You're going to use uh, possibly the white fog line on the side okay, of the and, road. Okay, and this is that sobriety test that we're probably more familiar with from TV and seeing in movies. That's your typical on the road do, when you demonstrate and then they're supposed to copy you? Exactly, like if you saw it on Cops or something okay. like that. And you're basically going to set them up where you're going to tell them to put their left foot on a line and then you're going to tell them to put their right foot in front of their left touching heel to toe and you're going to you're going to tell them to maintain that position while you explain doing the test to them and then you're going to tell them that when you begin to, when you tell them to begin doing the test you're going to have them take nine heel to toe steps in your direction so i'm looking at you know you like this and they're going to take nine heel to toe steps in my direction when they reach their ninth step what you're going to do is you're going to have them turn to the left with a series of small steps keeping their left foot on that line and then you're going to have them take nine heel to toe steps back the direction they came from now, while they're doing this, they're going to count their steps and they're going to watch their feet as they walk and they're going to keep their hands at their side. And then you're going to uh, physically mark down what kind of clues that you observed while they do that test. And this is all being taped? And this is all being taped on our squad car cameras. And, and why do you have it taped? Is that state law or is that um, required? It's for officer safety and also it's uh, if you have it taped, um, you know, you can use it in court. Okay. And then you can show if they take it to jury trial, you can show the jury, hey, look, here's here's what the guy That's looks evidence. like. You know, yep, sure. ab absolutely. So then uh, the next test after you do the walk and turn test is I'm going to have the one legged stand or with well, the one leg stand test. So I'm going to have them put their hands in their hands on their side and feet together and stand like I'm standing right here. Then you're going to tell them when you uh, first you're going to ask them if they have any disabilities that would prevent them from standing on one leg. Then you'll put them in this stance. Tell them not to do anything until you explain the test to them. And then you're going to tell them that when you, when you begin doing the test, you're going to lift one of your feet six inches off the ground, which is about the length of a dollar bill. And you're going to tell them to count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003 for approximately 30 seconds. You're going to tell them if they have to put their foot down to lift it back up and continue counting where they left off. And then I'm going to demonstrate the test to them again. So, you know, I'm going to say, you've got to put your foot down, 
lift it back up, but you're going to say 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. You've got to put your foot down, lift it back up, continue to count 1,005, 1,006. So then I'm going to I'm going to physically watch him do that test, and then uh, when it reaches 30 seconds, I'm going to be documenting uh, what I observe. At that point in time, then I'm going to have a preliminary breath test, and I'm going to have you blow into a, a breath test tube, and then it's going to tell me that. First off, I'm going to look for is the impairment that I see on on my breath test matching the, all my field sobriety testing, including the driving behavior that I witnessed. And then if, if it doesn't, then obviously I'm going to have to determine whether drugs are involved. Now, I mean, obviously, I might, somebody might blow zeros on a PBT, but I see all kinds of impairment. So then it tells me that there's more than, than uh, Maybe prescription pills. Yep. Or I mean, there's two. yep marijuana, bath salts. I mean, there's so much out there nowadays. Uh, a lot of narcotics. You know, heroin's big big in the area. So you know, it's going to tell you whether it's alcohol or drugs that's causing the impairment. And then I'm going to make my arrest. And then de depending on if 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 I've determined that it's alcohol or drugs. Then I then I'm gonna that's gonna dictate where I, if I'm gonna if it's a first offense I'm gonna take you to our jail, run you through intox. If it's a second or subsequent offense I'm gonna take you to the hospital and we're gonna draw your blood. And um, if it's drugs we're always gonna draw your blood. And then uh, it, and then once you uh, go to the to our jail then I'm gonna run you through the intox machine and issue a bunch of paperwork including citations. Um, and then you, if you can't find a responsible party to come and get you, then you'll stay in our jail for a period of 12 hours, and then they'll release you. Okay. okay. So let's move towards that a little bit. Let's talk about after the arrest. Give us some idea of the citations and what happens to that person after. Well, like a first offense citation is $817.50. That doesn't include, and that's just the, the, the fine. So then besides that, you have... Uh, an alcohol assessment, and you have a uh, alcohol class that you're going to have to attend in order to get your driver's license back at some point in time. So there's an expense in there, which I'm assuming is probably probably $300. I would assume, maybe even more. If you're over a .15, the state is going to mandate that you have an ignition interlock device in your vehicle. So you're going to have to have that ignition interlock and. There's an expense to put it in, and then there's a monthly charge for that interlock device. At uh, intervals, you have to have that in interlock device checked to, for its accuracy, and so you have that expense. And then once your insurance company finds out that you have, were involved in an OWI, um, you're going to go on high-risk insurance for a period of five years, and depending on what kind of vehicle that you drive, that can get really expensive. So. There's a, a lot, you know, people don't look at the big picture, but it's a very expensive process. Right, I don't think people have any idea when they set out that night what kind of uh, consequences are in store. No, none at all. Thank you, Deputy Roth, for all You're the welcome. information you shared, and a special thanks to Sheriff John Motz today from the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office. Now stay tuned as we head back to the studio with some very special guests. Thank you.